What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 worst Survivor Series pay-per-views ever, man, by Parks Fun Known. We just checked out a pretty good Survivor Series. A lot of you guys uh, were giving this Survivor Series like uh, 7 out of 10, 8 out of 10, 9 out of 10, or 10 out of 10, or even higher. I was seeing a lot of that in the comment section uh on my last video on my thoughts and opinions on survivor series this year and i gave survivor series i believe i gave it a nine out of ten if it wasn't for that boring of a women's championship match between ronda and uh shotzi it probably would have been a 10 out of 10 show i enjoyed it for the most part things could have been better but it was a solid serviceable show both the war games matches were um um they did their job uh in my opinion and triple h definitely knocked this one out the park with survivor series he made survivor series feel important once again so we're gonna check out some of the few times survivor series did not feel like it was important and we're gonna check that out appreciate all the love and support let's get right into this one Survivor series was last night but this list was written and edited before that so let me just quickly cover all my bases oh thank goodness survivor series is finally good again god triple h is the mm -hmm. best take two Bloody hell, what a disappointment. The endings to the War Games matches were so stupid. I thought Triple H's WWE was supposed to be better than this. God, wrestling's the worst. <laughs> Take three. Can't believe The Rock returned and took a poo in a plastic bag and then threw the plastic bag at Roman shouting, I'm Rocky Poo Poo, and now you're Rocky Poo Poo too. There we go. I think that's covered the most likely options. So last week, we talked about the best Survivor Series pay-per-views. Now let's talk Turkey. And by Turkey, I mean this goddamn Turkey. I'm Adam Hailing from Parts <laughs> Fun Known, and here are our 10 worst Survivor Series pay-per-views ever. And fair warning, this one's going to get a little grumpy. So if you do want to <laughs> see something a bit more happy, something celebrating wrestling, then check out last week's list. It's There's loads of really good Survivor Series pay-per-views on it. Hooray! Number 10, 1990. Survivor Series is somewhat famous for in-ring debuts, positioned as mm -hmm. it is as a major platform with six months to build to WrestleMania, but also not a show that traditionally sees these major feuds blown off. Sting debuted at Survivor Series, so did The Shield, The Rock, Scott Steiner, mm -hmm. Kurt Angle. But 1990 is infamous for one blistering debut, the first appearance of a superstar that would define the industry for decades to come, the turkey. The gobbledygooker, Eddie Guerrero's brother in a turkey suit who burst wow. out of an egg and danced with Mean Gene. Also, The Undertaker was there. Take his debut does make the show a huge milestone in wrestling. Of course it does. But the actual rest of the show sucks with the booking complicated. <laughs> the tried once but never again gimmick of all the survivors from each match being put into a big ultimate Survivor Series match in the main event. A convoluted and nonsensical stip provided to give Hulk Hogan and the Ultimate Warrior two wins on the night instead of one. Gotta love it when Hogan and Warrior win. <laughs> twice number nine 2015 <laughs> that's crazy you i would i would have never thought that the undertaker being introduced for the first time ever would have possibly still had one of the worst survivor series the show itself that's that's a crazy little dynamic there one of the greatest wrestling characters of all time debuts on survivor series but happens to be a pretty bad show there are worse shows in terms of in-ring quality, but 2015 was a difficult year for WWE. The Roman Reigns experiment was not working, and 2015 mm -hmm. Survivor Series was just a wearying example of how committed WWE was to it, much to the disregard of their fans. Seth mm -hmm. Rollins blew out his knee and had to vacate the WWE Championship, so a tournament was held to determine the new champ, unlike the 98 Deadly Games tournament, which swerved the fans with expert effect, crowning a megastar heel. 2015's tournament was predictable to a fault, featuring Roman forever miscast as an underdog big dog and wasting the huge match of Roman Reigns versus Dean Ambrose in a nine minute main event that never got off the blocks. Then Sheamus cashed in and no one wanted him or Roman at the top. So basically, yeah. Undertaker's entrance was cool, I suppose. I guess it, it wasn't as bad as his 30th anniversary. 
We'll get to that. <laughs> Reluctantly. Number eight, 2008. Bad show, this. The Boston crowd did its best, but even they are miracle workers. Even they couldn't rally themselves for the horrific bait and switch of Jeff Hardy being removed on the day from the triple threat match with Triple H and Vladimir Kozlov, yeah. leaving the latter two dudes to wrestle in abject silence, save for the occasional dirge of a boring jump for Edge returned to win the thing. John Cena returned to beat Jericho for the big gold belt, which at least sent the Boston crowd home happy because John Cena's from Boston. They're like, <laughs> yeah, he's from here. He's from here. Park the <laughs> car in the yard. Honestly, though, there was a bunch of dross on this show. The whole Jeff Hardy being found unconscious in his hotel room stuff felt horribly uncomfortable. The take mm -hmm. a big show casket match was slow moving and tedious. The women's elimination tag match took place largely to crickets featuring Hawthorne <laughs> being killed off by traditional moves to no reaction. The opening match saw the Survivor Series being HBK, Rey Mysterio, and the great Carly, which is palpably strange. Orton winning yet again at Survivor. Don't remember that. <laughs> HBK, the great Kali, and Rey Mysterio was on a team together. Don't remember that. Glad I don't remember that, actually. <laughs> Seriously, there's just not much to recommend the show, especially if you're not a fan of Cena wins lol. Number seven, mm. 2013. I really like one match on this show. The opening elimination match where Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns come back from being 5-2 down to win the match and preserve the whole, hey, the shield is pretty cool mm -hmm. thing. Everything else on his card, though, like your dad, sucked weirdly. The cast <laughs> of Total Divas defeated the cast of Hey But What About Wrestling, though. Daniel Bryan and CM Punk beat the Wyatt family in the middle of their hot streak. John Cena versus Del Rio was a competition of who could the fans care the least about. <laughs> holy shit, the main event. Randy Orton versus the leader of the Yes Movement, Big Show. Absolutely baffling how they tried to heat up the Giant with Daniel Bryant's yes chance in the build to this match, which ended up being performed to the kind of silence reserved for Ollie Davis lovemaking. Overwhelming crowd apathy. A stupid finish. Both combined to make the main event one of the worst matches of the year and a nightmare slog for all involved. Number Damn, six, 1991. Most years, <laughs> WWE at least pretends that Survivor Series is a big deal. One of the big four carries a bit of hype, but 1991 was a really strange year where Survivor Series, the pay-per-view, existed basically to sell another pay-per-view, namely this Tuesday in Texas, a secondary B-level pay-per-view, which was set to take place six days later on Tuesday huh? in Texas. Like Survivor Series, which wow. was a pay-per-view opened with a clip from superstars of the snake by angle between randy savage and jake roberts with the clip hyping a singles match not at survivor series but at this tuesday in texas it's i oh, wow <laughs> that that's it's my first time hearing about this there was an actual show called this tuesday in texas and they were using survivor series to hype up a show they were gonna have six days later No words. No words. <laughs> it's mental. The opening tag match, which was also Ric Flair's first pay-per-view match in WWE, was pretty darn good, up until it ended with five men getting disqualified at once. The Sergeant Slaughter elimination tag match was f***ing dreadful. The main event three-on-three -three match was a bit boring. The Rockers elimination match was okay. And in the middle of the show, Bizarrely, The Undertaker beat Hulk Hogan for the WWE Championship, which was a seismic thing, but mm -hmm. came at the end of a bad match and mostly only existed to hype the rematch, which was set to take place at, you guessed it, this Tuesday in Texas. <laughs> Number five, 2021. What is it with Survivor Series and stupid eggs? The last Survivor Series under Vince McMahon's watch felt appropriately tarred with all of his worst and weirdest excesses. First of all, oh, he was on the show. Yeah, the, uh, the whole golden egg thing to this day. We still don't know what that was all about. It, it just, it, it, it was just very weird. I was like, okay, all right, Vince. <laughs> scuttling on screen like the bizarre melted crab that he's become showing off a golden egg to what i can only describe as whooping deference from employees terrified for their job security yeah just fired a fucking bunch of them within <laughs> a week the night was hyped as a celebration of 25 years of the rock and he only appeared in awful red notice product placement segments uh -huh. and also via egg and also via a battle royal that was actually supposed to be about him but was actually about pizza and none oh uh, yeah we we watched this um um when it happened and 
it was the whole pizza place, man. It was just like, the hell was this, bro? It, it just, it just, it just reeked of just corporate chilling. It, it just, it, uh, the pizza being out there was just wild, bro. <laughs> it was like, I get it. WWE got to pay the bills, but it was just like, this is what we doing right now, bro. <laughs> None of this is made up at all. The fucking golden egg, naked corporate shilling, nonsensical backstage nonsense, awful air quotes comedy featuring great wrestlers Pratt falling for brand awareness, and annoyingly, some really good matches lost in the middle of it all. With Charlotte versus Becky and Biggie versus Roman Reigns, both mm -hmm. being really solid. Mm -hmm. Bianca Belair being given a great spotlight. These are all good things, all ultimately forgotten, of course because of the egg. Yeah, Number yep. four, 1994. You know you're in trouble when the best part of your show is middle-aged Bob Backlund beating Bret Hart for the WWE f***ing championship because of towel-based trickery. Now, to be fair, the match itself is actually fairly good sports entertainment. Owen mm -hmm. Hart delivers a really great hill performance at ringside. Everything else on the show sucks, though. The first <laughs> elimination match ends in a five-man countout, which is a kind of booking nonsensicality that can get in the bin. You can't count out men who aren't legal in the match rep, what the dick are you playing at? King Kong Bundy is a survivor in another match, which even for 1994 was very stupid. The Undertaker versus Yokozuna with Chuck Norris at ringside was heartbreakingly tedious and a real blow to anyone who enjoys Chuck Norris facts because he didn't do anything interesting. But the real <laughs> crowning turd on the cheesecake Whoa. was the clown match because the clown match is always the worst part of a Survivor Series. Whoa. Doink and three mini clowns versus Jerry Lawler and three mini kings called that's... Sleazy, Queasy, and Cheesy. That and they sounds won. awful. They won in a clean sweep. That sounds King life. Awful. Number three, 1999. Hey, you know what's fun? Lies! And boy, howdy did WWE lie to its fans at Survivor Series 99. Despite this being one of the hottest periods in wrestling history, WWE was starting to eat itself with ludicrous storylines, endless DQs, and a kind of car crash poison that would shortly destroy WCW from within. Keeping in line with that, this show is super weird. There's a DQ in Kane versus X-Pac, bizarre old women defeating actually talented younger wrestlers, hardcore Holly being a sole survivor in a match involving both Edge and Christian and the Hardys, gotta love that Bob Holly push. Big Show <laughs> beating four guys by himself, a big messy undercard, but don't worry, what a main event we've got for you tonight. Triple H versus The Rock versus Stone Cold Steve Austin, unbelievable. And the crowd were stupid to believe it, with Austin not being medically cleared, and the company knew that, yet they oh. only pulled him from the main event on the show itself. Oh, After yeah. Everyone had paid to see it being hit by a car and replaced with The Big mm -hmm. Show, who yep. went on to win the WWE Championship. Some hateful bollocks. Number yeah, two. That's, that is kind of fucked up. <laughs> like, that, I, I granted, I get why they did it. It's not really good business practice, but it's basically, oh, we got to hype this up because Stone Cold, you know, the Stone Cold, the Rock, and Triple H going at it for the title. We got to hype this up. And then they knew he wasn't going to be medically cleared, so they had to find a way to get him out of the match. Yeah, I, I get it. I get it. Is it, is it, uh, is it ethical? Probably not, but back then it was all about who's on the car that was going to make people buy the show literally that's what it was so 2020 i hate this show so much i mean it's in the thunderdome wwe's uncanny cube filled with fake cheers and digitalized cretins crowdless <laughs> wrestling is intensely dull to me so this yeah. show is always going to feature highly on this list even without the bizarrely terrible stuff wwe made its entire women's division look ridiculous in an awfully booked elimination tag match that was basically just one big punchline to the lana storyline raw clean swept smackdown for no reason a weird heel versus heel match between zayn and lashley admittedly good Good matches between Drew and Roman and uh, Drew and Roman. That was the best part of the show. Dasher and Asuka, but there's no crowd. So honestly, that they are not ones that I will ever want to watch again. And yes, that was a good match, though. Even it's my list, so do one. But finally, the insane Undertaker farewell ceremony. It's it's maddeningly bad. A bunch of old <laughs> men walking to the ring and clapping. Vince stumbling his way through a speech. Taker talking by himself to a bunch of screensaver people and then <laughs> ambling away. It's not WWE's fault necessarily because, you know, the world and that, but it is the worst possible end 
to one of the best possible careers. Mm. And number one, 1993. I hate this show even more. To be fair, considering the number of changes to the card, it's very likely the WWE also hate this show. Mr. Perfect was supposed to be on it, but was replaced by Randy Savage. That's good. Savage was the first person eliminated for his team. That's bad. Yeah. Jerry Lawler was taken off the card after allegations of sexual assault, replaced oh. by Shawn Michaels and his knights for no kayfabe reason whatsoever. It was a really dull match. The Doinks comedy match was about as funny as a burning f***ing hospital. The only title on the line the entire night was a championship that wasn't even part of the company. The Smoky wow. Mountain Tag Championships contested a match the crowd could not even give the shiniest shit about. And the main event was a predictable slog, still trying to make Lex Luger a thing, despite the company having soundly dropped the ball on him at SummerSlam with a sincerely lame win by Countout Victory Parade. <laughs> there is nothing on this three-hour show to recommend it to anyone. Anyone. You should avoid it at all costs. And that's our list. What's your hey, least favorite man. Survivor Series? Pay that's, that's... A lot of these, you know what I'm saying, was kind of before my time, or I was a little baby, literally, for uh, some of these, so uh, I didn't have to suffer through the horribleness that was Survivor Series and its questionable uh, matches and booking decisions on that particular show. But comment down below, let me know, what's your favorite Survivor Series of all time? I know we were checking out a list of the worst Survivor Series papers you but I wanna know what's your favorite? Like what's your favorite Survivor Series of all time that you can possibly remember? Let me know down below. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys for showing on the channel. Road to 100k. I appreciate y'all kicking with me. See you on the next one. Peace.